got here a little early, so we went to the library. Yes. Nice, friendly people. It's a really pretty town. Thank you. Where are you from? Winchester. Oh, oh that's yeah. a nice town, too, that's a nice though. Town. Mm -hmm. I was coming from West Boylston, so instead of going so back the switch to is off. And, and we're on this last time. We're on TV, though. Oh, look, it's on now. Oh, it's open. Okay. Okay. So, we're going to open the meeting for the Littleton Board of Health. And we'll through your agenda. Um, first thing on the agenda is board member reports. Does anyone have a report? I did not. Um, Can I report that we attended the training? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so la last week, Aaron and I uh, attended the orientation uh, for the uh, Department of Public Health for uh, Board of Health members. Um, it was very informative. I think we, we got some really good takeaways, including um, you know the ten essential uh, things that Boards of Health uh, have to manage, and also some information on accreditation, uh, which is very interesting. And I know it's a very long and arduous process, and um, it might just be something that we look set, set our eyes on for a goal uh, yeah, down the road, uh, baby steps, and then maybe one day we, we can get there. Um, and uh, we met uh, one of the keynote speakers, um, attorney Cheryl Spara, um, had an excellent presentation on um, just boards of health in general, uh, legal authorities, um, the 10 essential things that boards should be handling. And um, I thought it was, I think we're very fortunate to have her here tonight to. Uh, give us a little presentation at, at some point and ch chat a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll, we can introduce you now. It's uh, Cheryl Sparra, JD. She's Director of Policy and Law at Massachusetts Association of Health Boards. And um, again, we really appreciate you coming here to help us out. We are thinking about doing some, um, we're, tr we're trying to take a step backward and come to the roots of what the, the real mission of the Board of Health is and what their regulatory um, purview is and the boundaries and where we should be operating. So we're starting from scratch here. That We have a few new members on the board and we really appreciate your help. And, sure. and, we, and we, to. we need your help. So we're gonna run through, we have a couple of things on the agenda tonight. Um, the board member reports, minutes and correspondence updates, and then we'll take the rest of the time to talk about what we wanna do going forward and, um, and, and get your input. Sure. But thank you so much for coming. We really My appreciate it. And I, I learned a lot. I, I also went to the MAHB meeting and, lear and learned a lot. It was really helpful. Um, I think that the presentations are online. They are. So we need to send out, um, in the minutes, we can send out a, a link to the, the presentation so that everybody has access to them. Um, Am I supposed to be writing notes tonight? Uh, no. Okay. What happens is Shelley will take the um, okay. The video. Not because um, we're not going to make any decisions or yeah. She should be taking like the video, that. and okay. I'll talk to her about that. Okay. Follow up. Okay. Yeah. So I do have something here, um, and I guess it might become under it might come under board member reports. But we do have a uh, a memo here to Littleton Board of Health, um, copy to Neshoba Associated Boards of Health regarding 8 King Road, Middleton, Massachusetts, 01460. And this is from Concerned Citizens. Uh, we hereby formally state a nuisance complaint against the owners of 8 King Road in Littleton. The amount of junk and debris located on and around the property is a nuisance. We are formally requesting an investigation by the Littleton Board of Health and its agent at the Neshoba Associated Boards of Health so that this nuisance may be corrected in an orderly and timely fashion. Furthermore, we are requesting that the Board of Health and its agent at the Neshoba Associated Boards of Health inspect this property in accordance with Chapter 111, Sections 127A and 127B of the Massachusetts General Laws, State Sanitary Code, Chapter 2, Minimum Standards of Fitness for Human Habitation, 105 CMR 410. And my understanding um, from the note that Shelley gave me is that Jim uh, Gareffi, who is our health agent, will be doing an inspection at the site. So I think what um, we should do is have Jim do the inspection and then report back and put his findings in the context of relevant law and also give us um, the options for going forward. So what our options are for action to address the nuisance, how a nuisance is defined, whether this fits into a nuisance category, and then what are the actions we can take from there. Does anybody have any comments on that? 
8 King Road, where is, King, I, is it I don't King know. Road or King Street? King Road, it says. Mm. I'm assuming it's, it's King Street, but. There's King Road down by the lake. Long oh, lake, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can look it up in a minute. Mm. I don't recall. I, I don't know King, King Road. Road. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be ongoing. Um, I, um, just from my experience on the board, I think that we need to t really take um, notice of these nuisance complaints. They're from citizens of the town who are relying on us to address the concerns within the regulatory framework. And um, I think it's best to um, act quickly on those. And, and Gino, you've been on this board for a while. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, first of all, we have let the agent make recommendation, then we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. The other How long does it usually take Jim to act on he'll go. I think he'll go pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of us understanding what our options are right. within the, the legal framework and then moving forward on those and communicating to the owner of the site what our options are, what we're going to do, and what the rationale is for that. Okay. And, and also to the, the concerned citizens, whoever they are. I appreciate the concerned citizen, and we had that Harwood Ave yes. that lingered on and on, but there's laws that people can do what they want on their, their own, own property. property. So there well, may limit. be well, very limit. little that we can do. Right. It's possible, but I think what we need to do is have, we have them, to know first. Have them report yeah. and give us the regulatory framework. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then see what the options are. And you're right, maybe yeah. Maybe there's nothing or maybe if, there's something. I, I think if people have their own property, they can do whatever some places they can do whatever they want with it. Some so. places. I mean in that case that wasn't Right, and a nuisance. Right. Let's get the definite. We'll get the yeah. like legal yeah. definition, so it's all laid out for us, really yep. clearly. Yeah. So and that was not junk. That was a business happening on the back. Yeah, it's the know, definition so. of nuisance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which they talked about, right. which is they pointed out at this training is one of the most difficult things that boards of health deal with. Mm -hmm. So all perspective. Yeah. So let's get the regulatory um, mm -hmm. definition. Definitely. And then we can work from there. Okay. Um, the next are the minutes. Um, I don't believe we have any minutes to act on tonight. I was looking for the first time. Yeah, we didn't get anything by email, which mm -hmm. means that no one had a chance to take a look at them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things going forward is that, um, you know, Shelly, who is our administrative assistant, has also got another job now. So we really don't have anybody. And we're backed up. I think last meeting we approved minutes that were from February. And I feel personally that it's difficult for me to make decisions and be consistent when we don't have minutes coming back in a timely manner. So um, when we talked last week, we talked about maybe going back and putting in roles, responsibilities. And schedules, and I think that that's something that Keith Bergman needs to be here for the conversation and understanding what um, what people's roles and responsibilities are, what their budgets are, as far as um, the Neshoba Associated Boards of Health and also our internal staff, what their um, what their scope of work is and their budgets. So, what I'd like to propose is that we have Keith come in at the next Board of Health meeting to have a discussion on that. And um, I'm not sure if we have to vote on that or not, but um, we could take a vote if. Um, no, sure. What are the feelings on that? Definitely. If you want to take a vote, does somebody want to make that motion? I'll make a motion. We need it. I'll make a motion to um, have <coughs> Keith Bergman attend our next meeting so that he can help us with a little bit more, figure out whose roles and responsibilities and who's to do what. So. Yeah. Anybody, anybody want to second that? I'll second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Great. Um, correspondence updates. Do we have anything else? No. Okay. So we're moving on. So easy, the last easy. meeting. Yeah. Until. Until. Um, until. <laughs> Shelly put together a package for us. Um, just running through the package. Last meeting, we have a table that summarizes uh, local regulation, uh, the Title V requirements. Uh, local regulations in 2007, local regulations today, so that we can do a comparison, and then some proposals for updated local regulations. And um, 
you put this together, and I, I think that um, I, my understanding is that these are proposals for discussion, and that we're here to discuss them and to evaluate them, and then we'll come up with. Um, I think this needs some thought, and we'll come up with some recommendations, and then go into the formal process where we get input from the, the public, and then and then put them um, before the board for approval. And this is why we have Cheryl here, which is really helpful. Um, also in the package, Shelley has um, put in Little Tin Board of Health regulations, requirements of the subsurface disposal of sanitary sewage, which are the current regulations. As you go through, you'll see um, many of these sections were repealed in 2007 and 2011, which is reflected in the summary table. And um, this, just for the uh, people who are in attendance here, this would be in the uh, uh, minutes from our last meeting. Um, and uh, would you like to have a copy of this at this point? If you have one. We do. Yeah, if you can have one. Sure. They'll go in the minutes anyway, so I think All it's right. important for anybody who um, is here. Hard enough to write. Got it. Yeah. And then we've got um, a notice um, dated January 25, 2011. Tommy Littleton, Massachusetts, Board of Health Regulations, Requirements for Subsurface Disposal, Sanitary Sewage. And uh, that's the legal notice that I believe uh, preceded the, um, the regulations we see as adopted. So one's 2011 and one's 2013. Is that your mm -hmm. understanding? I think too? so. Yeah. We also have a memo uh, dated 2009. Um, so what she's provided is a regulatory history. Mm -hmm. And then we have also a wells, uh, water mm -hmm. wells, portable water wells are also under our jurisdiction and uh, provided a, a, a copy of that. And that is chapter um, 226, so that's also the Littleton Code, that's, so that's local. And then we have um, a flyer, Public Health National Center for Innovations. Does which regarding includes the accreditation. So the accreditation yeah. information. And then Guide to National Public Health Department accreditation, which is also a separate issue yeah. that um, I think we, we can talk about. So I propose that we go ahead and um, start talking about the proposed regulations, what they used to look like, what they look like now, what we're seeing on the ground and in practice, and the result of that, what the community, what are um, based on input from the community, what thoughts are with representatives of the Littleton community, and um, what we should do about that, if anything. And um, Cheryl's been provided a, a, a mm -hmm. set of those so she can review it. So I guess. Um, I think the first thing would be just to kind of keep it very grounded in the legality of the whole thing, is to maybe ask for your opinion on what you see in other communities versus what we've got here. Sure. Do you want me to come up or yeah. 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 That should be an open discussion. You can yes. provide yeah. your input and then everybody should feel mm -hmm. very free to ask as many questions as well. Um, and as I mentioned um, to Kevin in one of my emails, the Title V is not my area of expertise, but I do understand the legal authority of boards of health to enact local public health regulations, especially when it comes to Title V. There's actually um, Chapter 111, Section 31 is the enabling statute that permits boards of health to make reasonable public health regulations. and. Courts in Massachusetts have consistently upheld that authority. They will not substitute, a court will not substitute its judgment for the judgment of the Board of Health. You are the administrative body that has legal authority to make a public health law. Um, your town meeting also has that legal authority to enact a public health law through the bylaw process. So that sometimes does create sort of a little bit of a, you know, it, there's always a balancing test because I don't know of one public health law that was enacted by a Board of Health that was overturned by the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts. There was one, but it was because the law was very poorly drafted and it didn't do what it 
intended to do. Um, but that's the only case that um, did not uphold the law, and it was a very technical matter within that specific law. So, um, and also, believe it or not, the only local public health laws that require a public hearing are those which surround Title V. So you, by law, even though MA, my agency and anyone who does any work in public health in Massachusetts would strongly suggest holding a public hearing before enacting any law, um, because how the heck are you going to get community buy-in for something if you don't give your residents the opportunity to be heard and to and to weigh in on what you're proposing mm -hmm. to do. But it really is Title V issues that actually require um, legal notice and um, a public hearing and also a description of why the board feels that you need additional local conditions to be put in place in addition to the state law. So. So it's it's a it's a high, higher burden than with any other um, regulation that would address a local public health issue. So um, that's important to remember. I did just bring a copy of, and, and I should say I don't represent the Littleton Board of Health. I can't. Um, I can only provide technical assistance and legal education. Your advice comes from, I'm sure, your very able town council. So I'm here just to provide you with some um, legal education. So I'm leaving, I'm going to leave you with um, Chapter 111, Section 31. And I also pay 10 cents a page at the Littleton Library to print <laughs> these out. Um, an appendix that's in our legal handbook that MAHB put together. It has not been updated, unfortunately, since 2011. But it goes through the procedures for how a Board of Health adopts a local regulation. And um, it's pretty it's straightforward. Whenever I've given this to a board, they found it to be sufficient for their purposes. So I will leave these things with you. And if you want to go through now, um, I'm happy to go through this piece by piece if you want to do that. Well, I have a question. So you said no public hearing needs to be done. You suggest it, but it doesn't need to be done except when we're doing something with Title V. Yes. So in 2007 and 2011 when these were repealed and changed, were those all public? Were those they should have been public were they hearings. Public hearings? There, there but they're not all Title V. I don't believe there was a public hearing to take out and repeal, I believe there was a public hearing to adjust the perk rates. Okay, um, so if, if you're not establishing stricter conditions than the state law, you wouldn't need a public hearing. So if you were rescinding local conditions, I would always recommend that a public hearing be held on any matter. But the community didn't know, I think, when they were taken out. You know, it, it, it do we have any, do we have any um, record of whether or not there was a public hearing when these were changed? Well, there was a legal notice that yeah. the chair mentioned, which usually, I don't know whether it was a legal notice of a summary of what the regulation was or whether it was a legal so notice oh, of a public that? hearing. Oh, okay. Um, so we're, I mean, we're requiring, uh, Shelley told us that we're required for public comment period, but I mean, my feeling is that the more public involvement, the better. So why not do a public? Yeah, meeting? absolutely. Yeah, I agree. No, well, I'm just. I agree. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Oh yeah, no, she's just questioning just, what happened. What happened? What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because we had all these pieces. Seems like major, major definitions changed. Yeah. You know, in 2007 and 2011, and if they, if if um, Cheryl is saying they didn't need public hearing. Well, because they, they were change. repealing local conditions. They weren't making it stricter. They weren't making it stricter. Yeah. It right. sounds like it to me they were making, they were repealing. And, and according to this, the legal notice doesn't, doesn't mention a public hearing. It just says that the, um, they're available at this So location. it was a so legal summary. Like, yeah, so mm -hmm. it sounds like they did not have a public mm -hmm. hearing. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what it sounds like to me. 
And I don't know in some of these case, cases under local regulations today, um, I'm not sure where, for instance, Regulation 5 on perk testing, uh, I don't know, it, it's different. You have the regulations in two, 2007 and then you have a regulation today and then a proposed regulation. I don't know where, how the perk test regulation got changed. I mean, I, I'm, I don't think there was a public hearing. I don't know, and, I, and again, I don't know whether you, this, whether the change made it less strict. I think it was at um, 2011, 2013. Right, so it used to say that oh, a yeah. perk rate over 30 minutes an inch was a fail on any lot. Yep. And it got adjusted to saying 30 minutes an inch um, slower than 30 is failed on a lot that's smaller than 30,000 square feet. So they weakened it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So subs they, they took out subsections were repealed in 2011. Right. I saw that. Okay. And then they were the A and the B changed and became less strict, it looks like. Yeah. This says A through D, G, and H were repealed in right. 2011. So again, they probably they didn't hold a public hearing because they were making them less strict, yeah, mm -hmm. and easier to pass. And probably, Correct. right? So probably, I bet yeah. I'm assuming these are directly from the state regulation. The uh, what? What it said in 2007? No, what it's what it, it, this 2011 um, or 13 or wherever. No, the state says 60 minutes an inch is a fail. Is so so these minutes. are still stricter. They're still stricter than the state. But they loosened them just in the case that over, over if the lot is big enough, then 40 minutes an inch would be allowed. So this yeah. technically probably should have had a public hearing, yeah. but you know, actually, I don't know if you want to go back yeah. there. I mean, or just move on. We don't know. We don't know what was happening at that time. So. Right. Well, I have I had the minutes from a couple meetings in late 2010 and 2011, and it did actually say that we need to have a public hearing to change that. But I don't know if that public hearing ever happened. Yeah. But you know, you're yeah. you're going to hold a public hearing anyway on so your new proposed yeah. Yeah. regulations yeah, anyway. Like so that's going to cure. Gina, would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like everybody agrees mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. So that'll yeah. cure whatever. Yeah. yeah, we'll just hold on. <laughs> right. And I'm assuming, I don't know, but this isn't a great chart. I don't know who did the proposed updates. It looked like in some cases they were just reinstating regulations that existed prior. Yeah, so to that's them a being starting ascended. point for um, this is what we could do, and then that's a starting point for discussion. By the board, okay, with your input, and then uh, the board's input, and then we'll move on to the public um, input. Yeah. So it'll be done like that. So and I'm assuming point. town council reviewed these. Not not at this point. Uh, no, no. I mean the the prior ones. The I hope so. Yes, yeah, so yeah. assuming that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because whoever he or she will be the ultimate yeah. um, judge on these. So I'm not sure, and again, because I'm not an expert on Title V, I'm wondering if you would like me to see if we can get an expert on Title V, someone from the Department of Environmental Protection, which is the state agency that oversees Title V. It's not um, yeah. the Department of Public Health. I think that would be great. I Absolutely. think the more information, the better. Definitely. You know, I think we all mm -hmm. feel that way. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can't promise anything because yeah. they are stretched, but this is their bailiwick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they should be providing TA if, they're, if they have the resources to yeah. local cities and towns in, in assisting. Yeah, that would be great. Okay.
And I know there is a chapter in our guidebook, which is online, and you can just download chapters, and there is one on Title V that mm -hmm. may also be helpful. And there is also a chapter in our legal handbook on um, Title V that just goes through legal authority to adopt them. But I can provide you with those, um, or you can go online to our website and download each specific chapter, and there is one on septic and sewer. Okay, and um, I in that summary I did uh, last time, the, the checklist, that link is in there to MAHB right. yeah. guidebook. So if you guys don't have that, just let me know and I'll send it. Yeah. That would be in the minutes, too. So I think something to just consider as we go through this is that, you know, there's, there's two types of septic systems that we come before us. There's upgrades, yeah. pre-existing systems that are failing or need to be fixed for whatever reason. And um, then there's new construction. So I feel like you know the some of the language in here like you know a reserve the reserve area of equal capacity suitable for subsurface disposal um, and upon which no permanent structures will be constructed must be provided for all sewage disposal systems I mean in some instances you know on a small lot for an upgrade we're not going to be able to fit that reserve area um, and and that happens that happens a lot but I feel like you know if we're taking raw land and putting a new system on it then maybe that should be a requirement Mm -hmm. um, so just something to consider as we go through. Well, that's when they come before us and ask for a variance because right. they won't have enough room for the um, right. reserve. And we sometimes give it to them. Well, I think that's some of the stuff that we want to revisit on that. You know, we try to be really fair across the decisions and, um, and consistent so that it's fair. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to decide on, you know, what our um, approaches are going to be as far as granting those variances so that we can um, be consistent. Be very and consistent. Have that, and have that, <coughs> that spreadsheet, like you said, yeah, of what we did, what they asked for, yeah, what the variance and then what we granted them to yeah. so that we can go back and say, well, on King Road or King Street or whatever that is, yeah. we said no because it was too small and so that we don't say, you know, so this person says, well, you gave it to King Street. Right. Why won't you give it to me? Right. So being consistent. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, we have existing, but as Kevin was just saying, we've got, we have areas like Long Lake is one of them and Mattawanake and they have small lots there and people need to upgrade the systems and so I think as a board we want to support that right but we need to be clear on what the delineation is mm -hmm. between you know doubling the size of your house and keeping your house and being able to put in a, a functional system right and so there, there's there's that and then there's the new build and we're, we're kind of caught in the middle of that and I think that's, um, and, and please, please um, add in your thoughts mm -hmm. on this, but to me that's the, the real, one of the cruxes of the matter here. Is what to require for newly built property and what to maybe vary for right. existing so structures? If we, if, we grant this, if we grant a variance to that regulation, you know, should it, should it be called out that's different for, you know, an upgrade versus new? You know, just so we don't find ourselves in a bind because we granted a variance to that regulation for this Well, that's why you're, you're very careful when you grant variances and you, um, you require the applicant to demonstrate that they can protect public health mm -hmm. even with that variance. And frequently there, w there usually is an expert with the applicant that right. can explain sufficiently to the board what what criteria they're using to determine that public health will still be protected with this. And there's, what I find is that there's a lot of give and take, and the solution might be somewhere in the middle between what the board thinks is adequate and what the applicant is suggesting. So there's room to negotiate so that you get the most public health protection you can 
given the lot size and the proposal that the applicant is So making. in the case of a new build where they're seeking a variance to local regulations that have been put in place to, for environmental and public health protection, um, and I'm, it, look, you say you're here for education, I mean, it seems to me that some lots are not buildable because correct some lots aren't and some are if there's a variance that's granted yeah and that's for the board to determine just because it's a newly built property doesn't mean that the applicant doesn't have the right to request a variance mm -hmm. just because it's newly built the question would be whether the variance is going to still protect public health and that's a gray area well, that's that's your judgment. Yeah. I mean, you may remember from the course that that's an area where you have the discretion. You're protected from your. It's, it's your. It's the discretionary function of the board of health to determine whether the proposal is going to be sufficient to protect public health. And in other words, you're not. You don't want to put a system in that's set up to fail. Yeah. So you know, the applicant has to demonstrate how that is not going to happen. So in, in your knowledge and experience, um, are there any communities or is it possible within the legal framework to, as a board, say, well, we're not going to provide any variances to local regulations for new builds? I would say that that would probably conflict with the state regulations, which permit variances. I know you can be stricter than the state regulations because they're not preemptive, but my concern, and again, I have to go back and research this, but my concern would be that it, it might conflict with the intent of the state law, which is to permit variances for the very reason that some lots may not be unbuildable but may not be able to meet the requirements in Title V itself. So that would be my concern if you passed a regulation, but I'm, I'm happy to do the research. Um, if you would pass a regulation concerning Title V that prohibited all variances because they could still, the state law permits them to vary. So I just have to look at how preempt how preemptive the state law yeah, we, is. Yeah, we actually don't provide variances for Title V. What we do you provide, provide? For the local regulations, right? Some people come before the board to request variances for Title V. They but for new builds, we, I don't, we, don't, we don't give them. Well, it all depends. But the question that we do have an agent that uh, will recommend and will give his own uh, status and then will make the decision. Yeah. So you, you're not considering writing into the regulation, or you are, that there will be no variances? No, I think we should just take them as they come. Yeah, I don't think we write it into the regulation. Okay. Yeah. I guess I see there's like the state regulation, there's a local regulation, right. and then there's our policy, we, and that's where we get into being fair and consistent across the... That's your standard operating procedure. Yeah, and I think that's where, um, you know, in addition to the local regulations, which provide a framework and guidance for development, um, then we get into the stuff that goes before us, which is a gray area and is up to your opinion, really, our opinion. It is. Yeah. So it's gray, not black and white. Okay, yeah, it's within your discretion yeah, to right. determine that. Yeah. So I guess my question is, if it's in our discretion and we, as a policy or just for, um, Consistency. If we say, well, if it's a new build, we don't provide variances for local regulations. Is that consistent with the regulations? That's what I. That's that's. I don't know the answer to that yeah. question. I'm only guessing. Yeah. So I would need to look at the regulation, and I would want to talk to um, the legal counsel for the Department of Environmental Protection. Yeah. Because they're the state agency right. for Title Five. I yeah. understand trying to make it more concrete give us less gray area but it might be yeah it might be best for us to just take the cases one at a yeah. time and you know, well because they are all going to be different, different yeah. yeah based upon the facts that come before the board yeah. what kind of system they're proposing 
you know, what the square footage, the, yeah. they're not all going to be the exact same buildable or unbuildable lot. Yeah. Which makes mo more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we should just go through these one by one? Have you guys had a chance to read through this at all? Or? Yeah. 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 A little bigger because I know oh, that's <laughs> really. a lot of words. I don't think the young lady will be able to read all this. I I, I have read it yeah. actually. I I've know, read through your it. eyes going to get tired. Well, that's why I have reading oh, glasses. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it makes more sense if it was in, in a bigger. This is really something diminishing your your capacity. It's, uh, <laughs> well, to get it all on one page. Yeah, yeah. Here, uh, zoom in. We're on going one. Now. We're going one by one, so <laughs> you read that. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So Shelley yeah. basically said for us to come out of this meeting with a red line version and hand it back to her. Okay. Can you? Um, I I gave away my hard copy. Would you mind keeping it? You want to mark it up? Yeah. No, no, you can keep. It. It's good for you to have it, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Here. We got plenty of Are you, are, are, you a, are you a concerned citizen or? <laughs> A little bit about, uh, right, I'm trying to understand some things that happened in the past that impacts me and decisions moving forward that are in here, um, and then I'll just learn the process. Yeah, because we'd like to hear from you if you have anything to say now or Not now, after. it's more about kind of understanding and... When you have a question, just raise your hand. Yeah, right now it's more about... Yeah, but we want to hear from you. Okay. And thank Bye. you for coming. No problem. So I guess my only comment on the on the first one is maybe that that first sentence from 2007 uh, should be put back in on top of what is proposed, um, and then have them you know for obviously for an upgrade you know just have them come in for a, for a variance. I would agree with that because I think that um, as a base, the more the more um, choice that we have in there to work with, and then we can tailor it to different properties that come up, like for the get to give an a, a variance or not. I think we can't make it too tight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you think we shouldn't have a um, distance between the reserve area and the primary leaching area? No, I think this sentence, this first sentence, should be added back in. Oh, okay. That we should have it. Yeah. So it provides some. Yeah, because it gives them some kind of guidance rather than right. just kind of. We've got the reserve area must be shown for upgrades if feasible. So that gives mm -hmm. us the right. So it's stricter on the new build and provides some uh, relief for upgrades. How about and what about um, a reserve area must be available for new construction? Well, I think putting that first sentence right. A back reserve in. area of at least. Equal capacity suitable for such. Oh, must be fire for all sewage disposal systems in in new construction or. New I would leave it in there f across the board and then mm -hmm. vary it for an upgrade if we have to. Mm -hmm. um, I think what if you if instead of the reserve area you should say a reserve area, is that because that yep. a, a reserve area must be yeah so that. That well, you, you say a, a reserve area in the first sentence if you add it. Right. Yeah. So, so then it's okay to keep the. What do you think, Gina? 
Yeah, she's right. Do you know he's been on the Board of Health longer than all of us? So, so he's got the institutional memory. Yeah, he's our yeah. resident expert. Repealed 11 years ago. Yeah. Time flies, huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a blink. A lot of septic systems. Mm -hmm. Without a reserve area. Mm -hmm. I just read Littleton is the fifth fastest growing town in Massachusetts. Really? Foxborough, number one. So I've got, se are we on the second one now? Yeah, uh, regulation um, four. Yeah, so I have a couple of questions. On this. <coughs> One is, um, do we need to define deep? It could be an emission of the water sometimes, <coughs> so let's say feet, four feet or sometimes. Ten it feet. go up a little bit higher. Ten feet for deep holes. So I'm wondering if we can put in ten feet. That is right here. It's like three quarters of the way. Yeah, deep sorry. observation hole shall right. be dug to the depth of at least ten oh, feet. Oh, okay, sorry. And really, the um, the only difference between 2007 and what's being proposed here is that it says um, uh, for the timing of testing, mm. um, they should be dug for new construction should be dug during the months of February, March, April, and May, when the groundwater is at its maximum elevation. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. That was in the original. Yeah. And and I would That's just the worst case scenario. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I would just take out et cetera under bedrock, after bedrock, and be consistent and say the presence of bedrock or impervious material. Et cetera isn't a good word to put in a. Um, right. But also, <laughs> impervious material, um, what does that mean? Bedrock and impervious material, so it's junk stuff. Yeah, that won't perk 60 minutes. You know, if you got junk yeah. at the end, it's not going to perk. I know, but I, I think that means that. No, I think that means how deep does that mean? When they do the, the leach field, they always dig to a point where it's need to be, and they put a new material there, something that will, the water will absorb. Yeah, so that, that would thing. be a clay, a tight clay. When there's a lot of, like clay, clay, what happens to the clay? Nothing goes through. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they have to replace that and put material that they will uh, leach, you know what I mean? But, so impervious is a judgment call. Probably. Unless we put in. Oh. I think Title V says 60 minutes an inch or over is impervious. Okay. Yes, uh, they have definitions. Yes. And I have a question that I do I'd too. love to have your input on. Um, we have a lot of um, applications come in and they use the grain size analysis because their groundwater is at too close to the ground surface. Too high. And they're using grain size analysis for the perk. And in my mind, I'm a geologist, by the way. So in my you mind. Know more than I do. <laughs> The, if it doesn't perk, because a perk test takes into consideration the wide right. area. Grain size analysis is a point. It's, it's a point sample. So I'm a little uncomfortable in the grain size analysis, and I know it's I know it's part of you know the state regulation, but in actuality, it the representativeness of a grain size sample and the permeability and the ability of the soil substrate to to absorb the water may not be related. And I'm wondering if you've ever seen or if there is any leeway in the regulation for not using grain size analysis. Because what that does is it allows very um, areas with really high water tables. Mm -hmm. Like, what have we seen here? Um, 24 inches, 18, yeah. Oh, even shallower than that, you know? And they're coming in and giving us a grain size analysis of saturated material rather than the ability of the strata to really absorb that water. This is why you need someone from DEP yeah. to go. So you, it's again, it's another preemption <coughs> issue. You're wondering whether you can mm -hmm. vary what's in the state code. Mm -hmm. Because I'm afraid that these systems are going in and they're not, that the strata is not able to absorb them. And what that means is the water comes up and it, it 
the floods areas. That's why we always have to emphasize to the engineer to specify as the rich field, you know, maybe clay is as a good good uh, material, as bad material. This is our our responsibility to ask questions like yeah. that. And then if there's is, they say, well, we have to go up four feet. Why? Because the water or because the material. If it's the material, they, t they have to scrape it out and put a new material. Very simple. Yeah, but they'll take a they'll take a point sample for grain size analysis, and then they send it to a laboratory, and then they come back and say what it is. But right. Um, but this is nice ex extra expense. But I'm saying if there's only common sense, the engineer should know exactly in the construction the individual that he, he used the machine to, to dig the thing out. He's going to put good material, something that really is going to work. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, right. because it is responsibility. But that's right. Well. So you could. I had an engineer who built my septic tank backwards and then sealed the plan. Well, this so is this is not your fault. <laughs> I know. You should have got three. <laughs> you should have got three, three individuals to come. Well, it wasn't me who did it. I bought the house, but um, I'm just I'm just saying that yes, we're oversight here. Mm -hmm. I and mean, hopefully that was an anomaly. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, <laughs> my, and they went out of business. My question about the new construction and the observation holes only dug during those four months in the spring. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get guys that are coming in pushing back on that because they're in, you know they're trying to get their paperwork and their permits and everything in other months of the year. Well, we can and also... And we can't always know that that's always going to be when the water level is high my, because we might have a rainy summer. My, ex my experience is that you can go spring and fall. So if we wanted to, we could also put a fall date in. I mean, that's that's typical is spring and fall. Summer is not okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but in fall would have to be pushed out. I mean, you have to take into consideration climate change here too. Right. right. You yeah. just have to. So you've got to... I would say I you'd have to push it out to early October. Just I'm thinking that if someone goes to goes they if someone like decides that they've got some land in June and they have to wait again until February to do any yeah. observation holes, that's going to push them back, you know, 6 months to a year before they can start their project and I think we need to give them maybe a little more option like you said in the fall. So there's um we're trying to um we just did the climate change assessment in Littleton and they have a lot of groundwater data. And we're trying, uh, one of the recommendations was to put a groundwater contour map together so that we can understand the groundwater levels better and how they're changing and when they come up and down. And one of the, I think that would help the Board of Health a lot in addition yeah, to the Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that would come out of that. But I know that typically when you're doing sampling under DEP protocols, you go in the spring and the fall. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to, we could talk to DEP or we could talk to El the, the Water Department and see what's a good date in the fall. It would probably just be one month. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be too long. Right, think. because then you run into ground ground freezing. Freezing. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, but it's getting warmer. So our it, you, we just went through a little what I would call a drought. You know, a short drought, right. and typically that doesn't happen. Oh, until I know. July, no August. Long. So yeah, you know, yeah. I think we have to be careful about that. But that's why I think we need that groundwater contour map so we can see how the groundwater yep. is flowing. But we don't have it yet. But I think there should be some more options. So yeah, no, I think that's a good, that's a good idea. October 15 and November 15. I think we have to really um, look at the data okay. and see what the trends are. I It used to be um, September, October, okay. but it might not be that anymore. Could have changed. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, that was like 10 years ago. But yeah. like when you're doing landfills, right. it's spring and fall. What would you recommend we put in? I think we have to look into it. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend any. I, I'm guessing we, we, October, but I, I don't know yet. Because September is typically an Indian summer now. Right. Sometime even October. Right. But you can always mention to the engineer and the, and the individual that's going to build a home. He says, look, you might have this problem. So that it's up to them. If something happened, they yeah. have responsibility. Well, they're advocating. But we can suggest too. it. So we are in a clear. Yeah. Okay. So we can look into it, mm -hmm. find out what the data is, and put yeah. a fall date in. Does that mm -hmm. that work? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, who do we get to do that? You know, we could even put something in there that looks at rainfall. And says that you have to have a certain precipitation the month 
previous. Mm -hmm. That gives them an option. That's a good idea because then we don't have to look at data from the right. past. I know because we're going to look at what's And present. it gives them an opportunity to go out and get the data. If they're seeing like a warming event, I mean, we have to be careful that it's not frozen. But that's a, that's a possibility. That, that's kind of a climate change accommodation. Mm -hmm. We're just thinking that they're going to want, they've, they've got their money in their property and they're ready to go and, you know, it's just too variable, you know, what month when it rains, you know. But that's, it, yeah, but you're talking about long-term, you know, structures. They might have to wait a couple of months. But you're right, we should order or offer some flexibility. Yeah. And if we could come up with something, we might be able to get some information that we could come up with something that they could come in, show data, and prove that there was a significant rainfall and it wasn't freezing temperatures. I mean, sometimes that happens in February now. Or in March. Yeah. Hundreds of inches of snow. Yeah, melt, snow mm -hmm. melt. So we, we would need to some melt, so we'd have to yeah. figure out. Um, we'd have to get some Yeah, because what it. did you have? Because, uh, I mean, March we had three nor'easters. <laughs> Right? Right. Yeah. And in April we would have had melt. Mm hmm So that water levels would have been high then. Yeah, and sometimes September's wet, sometimes it's dry as bone. All depends. Okay. So no decision on that one. You don't have to look into it. So who who has that um, information that you said on groundwater that you um, did with the um, That, what that, we have to was that poke around. What was that committee that you just said you went to? Uh, the climate change? That's me. <laughs> but um, there's data. Uh, we can go to DEP. Um, oh, okay. So there is an uh, executive office in energy and environment. They have a climate change group there. They're not connected to DEP right now, but they should be able to point us in the direction of the data. And then we'd have to get legal um, <coughs> help with that. Does that sound good, Cheryl? Yeah. That might be something that you're starting to run up against, too, is the climate change the, well, in, issues. Well, in lots of different areas, yeah. yeah. But that's one of the things that came up when we were talking about is septic systems, because you're changing the design parameters. Right. So if you've got the water table fluctuating, it's coming up, you're going to have more failures because mm -hmm. you're not going to have that separation, right. which changes a, lo a lot. It all depends how high the water goes because when they put the septic system, okay, it's all concrete. And then they don't just put it in concrete. They, they put it something like a black, like a black paint. Like, you you're know talking about the tank. Right, to, to protect the tank mm -hmm. from penetrating. Okay, or disintegrating. But uh, that is the chance that they take sometimes. If the level of the water is high and they got to put a septic system, and at that particular time is the water is high, they will say, well, it will wait. And then it goes down, but you're still going to have the same problem when it rains. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see those mountains sometimes. Yeah. So they put a lot of dirt, a lot of good material, and they put the tank where the water will not even touch the tank. So there is a chance that the individual, oh, I don't like that. I don't like the mountain. So they, they might take a chance, mm -hmm. but that's their responsibility. Yeah. So we can only do so much. You, can, you know what I'm saying? It's their home, and they say as long the water doesn't penetrate the tank, and as long the leach field is higher, because if the leach is low, now you got a lot of water there, right? So the, as long the leach field is higher, they have no problem. Yeah, because okay. What concerns the tank is me protected. is when we approve something, I know. the house is sold, and the buyer I is know. taking our approval, saying that it's a workable system. And yeah, but we can always, uh, yeah. you know, recommend that that, that that will not be a good idea. Mm. But it, it comes. Well, and don't some boards require deed restrictions in some of this? Well, no, that particular no, because they can fight it. For bedrooms, it happened. That happened. On the closing bedrooms and um, yeah. finished basements and stuff. That happened. They get an attorney, they go to court, and they say, well. But I'm talking about the separation between the bottom of the system and the yeah. water table <clears throat> if it comes off. So currently, and they if go it's in two and feet. they want to sell. So if it's two feet right now, yeah. and, the, and the water table's rising due to climate change, and now it's going to be one foot. And then they want to sell their house, and the thing fails. Right, yeah. But it's as long as it doesn't do penetrate, 
they're, they're safe. As long as they have no problem. As long as they take care of it, like they, every two years, clean it up. Very, very inexpensive. Do you want to talk about um, Regulation 5? Sorry, groundwater is my big thing. <laughs> I gather. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> so basically what, uh, it's the same, it says the same thing as it is for today, um, except for new construction, basically brings it back to what it said in 2007. Uh, the information about uh, A through D is all part of what Title V states now. So it's kind of redundant to put that back in there. Sorry, you said A through D is redundant because it's covered under Title V? I believe it is. But we have it under the proposed update? <coughs> the local regs? No, so no, you took no, you took it out. So you still need, you know, the passing perks and you have to have your agent be there with the soil evaluator. Uh, they still have to be open that same day. And the slowest perk rate obtained shall govern the leaching area. So this doesn't talk about using the um, rain so size analysis? Sub analysis, no. But I think this is where you would add that? Yeah. Does anybody have any thoughts on the grain size analysis? Um, in place and I have to my test. note is to research and see whether you could add that. In my experience, the sieve analysis is actually more conservative. Yeah. A perk rate than an actual perk. Um, but I agree that it doesn't tell the whole story. Yeah. Plus, it's it's a it indicates a high water table. Right. So I think that the testing, when it's done in the wetter months. That's typically when they'd use a sieve analysis. Mm. Um, but although it would come back more conservative, you know, maybe something's to be said for where the groundwater actually is at that point. And yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any anybody thoughts on that? No. no. Maybe we can talk to the DEP expert about the sieve analysis I, piece yeah. of it. Is everybody okay with the rest of it? Uh, the minimum setback distances. Regulation 6, I think, is really, <coughs> truly what, what opened a lot, of, a lot of things up for the lack of environmental protection. Yeah. Um, just being able to build within 100 feet of the wetlands. Uh, so I think that that piece of it we should add back in. And, you know, we have... Um, People come in and they say, we're waiting for CONCOM won't approve until you approve, and we have got no guidance on it. And it would be, I feel, it would be, I would feel so much better if we had some guidance in our regulations. Because, I mean, Board of um, Health, I think, goes first. So. Yeah, but it, it's tough. No, we've had at least two that I've been, since I've been on, that yeah. have said, we're waiting to hear from you. Right, and so we're Con waiting for is CONCOM. okay, but they're, they're waiting, waiting to hear from us. Right. So. Uh, the other thing I, I really wanted to ask you is that um, it would be interesting to hear what you have to say on the purview of the Board of Health as far as protection of uh, public health versus protection of the environment. There's some people who have been on the board who are very um, specific in that we're only dealing with public health and not the environment. That's not true in my opinion. Um, that's why you, you, you can enact regulations relative to something that the state agency is not the Department of Public Health, but the Bureau of the Department of Environmental Health. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at within the Department of Public Health, there's also an environmental department. But you're also charged with 
um, enforcing some DEP regulations like Title V. So there's, in my mind, no question that a Board of Health is responsible for protecting the health of every member in the community, and that means protecting the environment as well. We, we, we sometimes get into challenging situations when we're looking at wetlands or other issues under the jurisdiction of the, of the CONCOM, but in this case, this is clearly something that would be, it, be within the jurisdiction of the Board of Health because there's a real public health reason for not wanting to install within one a septic system within 100 feet of a wetland, just like you wouldn't want um, someone to be breeding cows, you know, within 100 feet of a wetland. I mean, there are just some environmental areas where the Board of Health is not just about protecting people; it's also about protecting the environment. Um, because the environment affects people. You can't have one without the other. And you will, if you look at um, essential services, the 10 essential services, or you look at um, the new public health 3.0 that the government has, has drafted, you'll see clearly that there is environmental protection within the authority of boards of health. Yeah, when you're dealing with septic systems, you're dealing with the, the environmental resources, groundwater, right. whether it's in a wetland or directly in a groundwater. Right. Yeah. And in Littleton especially, there are exposure points through the groundwater, through um, direct exposure in our surface waters, indirect exposure through fish, although we catch a lot of them. I don't know if anyone needs them. <laughs> Maybe they do. Catch and release. <laughs> yeah. And then also the potable water. Right. It comes from our groundwater. So even it, the environmental really translates into absolutely. public health. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, 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 I feel thank you for that because um, that's been a point of contention here. And do you have any questions on that, Gino? No. I was going to say that's kind of that. your baby, too. Yeah. Because you always, I mean, yeah. Well, because mm -hmm. there's an exposure point. Well, no, you've, it's always been like the communication between the two boards. That's always been something that you've always Well, and, and that that's not that unique of, so. to Littleton. Um, that's a, a common challenge for municipalities. And what I love seeing, and you see it sometimes, is that when someone is proposing to build something, um, they're given, a, ideally we'd love to be, see them being given a packet of information. These are the town departments that are involved here. These are the permits that you need. This is what each board does. So that they have a map as to what they need to do. Before and they it, it happens before they, build. before they build. So the planning, everyone knows what's, what's coming up the pike. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen very frequently, but, but it would really be nice if someone could put together mm -hmm. a packet for a developer, a builder, a business owner, anyone who's coming into town so that they know what departments they need to go see and that all every department knows this builder is proposing something or this business owner yeah. is proposing something. That's a great idea. So that's interesting because yeah. I'm on the Economic Development Committee and we were talking about how to um, streamline permitting and having a quarterly or twice a year head of department meeting so that potential new business coming into oh, town great idea. can meet with the people yeah. that they need to meet with. Well, because and having we, a packet with everybody, you know, contact information, rules and regs, this is, you know. Right. I mean, it's, it's the business owner's responsibility, but to be user friendly, it would really be helpful, I think, mm -hmm. and would avoid, avoid a lot of these conflicts that, ends up, that end up rearing there. And we have, have a master plan implementation committee now so that if you included in that what the master plan is getting at, what the end point is, you know, the goals, and also we're doing a, um, a study on low impact or recommendations for low impact development. So things like that that would protect our natural resources and also public health that Littleton is promoting that would help them get through the permitting process if we included that in the packet that would put them kind of in sync with that initially rather than 
designing the whole thing, coming before the board and really, hey, right. yeah. where's no, all you, this stuff? Yeah, right. you know, yeah. We yeah. want to see it. So that, that would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You could do that through economic development, probably, too. We, we don't try anything. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Talk after him. Oh, I can't remember that. Um, so regulation, so, uh, regulation 8. Individual sewage disposal system and connecting sewer lines shall be installed on the same lot as the facility discharging sewage into said system. I think that's a health issue and a liability issue, I guess, for the for the owner of that system. Sure. Could you explain that the liability and what the rationale is for that? So I guess it would be you know if you're pumping you're pumping your sewage or if it's going gravity to it to another lot, um, just the implications. That that would have. You don't own that lot. Especially, yeah, if you don't own that lot. And, yeah. um, or if it down the road is going to be owned by someone else, however so it gets subdivided. We do have like shared s septic systems mm -hmm. in town, so how, how does ownership go on that? I I'm think sorry, it's I the next reg right, yeah, right beneath. I guess there's an HOA. Eight. Yeah, they have a oh, shared system. You've approved some of these, haven't yeah. you? Share, share, they share. The responsibility go to both people. Something happened with the septic. They had yeah, to take care of it. Both parties. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they put some money away on make sure okay. that money be there. Yeah, like in a little escrow account or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you had. You were. We looked at what. So they used to Cooper. say yes. that yeah, shared systems will only be approved if each individual lot proposed to use such systems can support a subsurface sewage disposal system, which can meet the requirements of Title V and local regs without a variance. The area proposed, which can support a subsurface sewage disposal system on each lot, shall not be used for any other purpose. And the board may require financial and legal guarantees to ensure system inspection, maintenance, and repair and replacement, which will occur without delay or expense to the town of Littleton, the Littleton Board of Health, and or its agents. So I think that there, we need that something like that in there for protection for the people. Yeah, um, so that reduces the risk, forward, which, um, forward. Lisa, when we were looking at Cooper, I know that you had a bunch of questions on that to make sure that they were protected, you know, financially. I guess. I don't remember. <laughs> I do. I remember. I do remember. I do remember that they changed systems and they did an have escrow. They had like an escrow account yeah, for money away. maintenance. Yeah. yeah, something happens. But yeah. if we if and we then a, and a scheduled maintenance um, program so that they were pumping it at regular intervals and okay. maintain inspecting it at regular intervals. Mm -hmm. So, but if we put stricter regs on, you know, not stricter, but mm -hmm. without more variance. Pretty that reduces the risk even further because it's a more robust system, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you can put it in. The question is, if you put it, let's say, August, and they, they pump in in November, because probably they're in vacation, so you can't punish them because they're not there. You know what I mean? So they have to have some responsibility themselves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I sure think they that, had, didn't they have a... Yeah, they have a schedule. Yeah. I think they had a... Uh, a a company contract. or some a contractor, yeah, a contractor that right. yeah. was responsible for it, and they paid that contractor right. too. So, so, so I think the idea of this is that should that shared system ever fail, each individual to be person to could pay. put their own septic system yeah, yeah. in the back of their house or in the front of their house. Ah, so so they would no longer be part of. So yeah, if they had to, the shared if it fails, they yeah. disconnect. So that really reduces they go, their risk. Yeah. If they have room, so you they have room. Stuck. Yeah, right. That's that's, that's why it's without a variance. Yeah, too. that's a really great idea. But that, but that, what would that do to the people that are still in the shared system? Well, if that shared system fails, then they all need well, to then put new systems in there. Okay. Well, then doesn't the lot when the new build doesn't the lot have to have um, a reserve, a place for a reserve? Correct. Do do they have that now anyway? Or do they say, oh, it's a shared system, they don't, it's not going to require a reserve? I don't know if there's a reserve required on that. So they, they might need to. Have, no, no reserve. No reserve. You might no need reserve? to. They just have a septic system divided by two. Yeah. They, what they call a shared. Mm -hmm. But the question is the reason they do that so they can put more housing. Right. So they, they don't have to put ex, use a extra land for the septic system. Yeah. From one house to the other house. Congestion. They're congested yeah. together, so they can put extra But I, told, I thought Title Five re required a reserve for a new bill. Well. <laughs> it might be a, a it, reserve. It might be uh, a reserve. Not a reserve for each individual right. house, but maybe a reserve for, for the, the system. Open. Yeah, that's, okay. Yeah. So, so the there, that system. is there, okay. 
A reserve for the shared system? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's new construction, so they need to have a reserve. Okay. But if if the system fails and then the people want to get off on their own, would that would it be me? I, I guess I lot agree. size that have to have enough space to to put, it to put their own system in Richard if they wanted Perks. to go off. Which I guess it's a lot like sewering the common. Like right. people have the option of getting on and off the shared system right. or be on their own. So one thing to consider on this one is that um, if we require the um, without a variance so that each has a reserve, the you know, smart growth and cluster mm -hmm. housing mm -hmm. is supposedly um, low impact development. Um, not in terms of surface water, but um, just something to think about. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, and this comes up a lot yeah. with cluster zoning, is what do we do with these septic systems? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could they eliminate the land or what do you do? You, you, the, the board ends up being the bad guy a lot of times. Yeah. Because they just can't support mm -hmm. the number of units that yeah, I mean, if you're talking about desired. environmental and public health protection, that if that's the priority, not the number right. of units that goes on there. Mm -hmm. But that, if you remember correctly, there was a stack of permitting and investigation that had gone on with that development in Cooper. Mm -hmm. So we had the agent say he was fine on it. Um, town council was fine on it too. Yeah. So. And they went back and forth, back and forth. Yep. I mean, they do the well, they did their due diligence on that we'll project. We'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't, it's the only one I I know about in town, right? Although the Kimball Farm, that new one that goes, that's going in, the um, behind Toyota that just came up last night at the board of selectmen meeting. Oh, I don't know about that one. Too. Yeah, there's. That's been in the works. The company went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're trying to revitalize. Yeah. They're gonna do a 40B or yeah. something like that back there. 40B. So that'll be interesting to see what they do for their septic if they. I think they did have some residents in there, so they must have something. It's just something to think about. I, I don't, I'm not losing opinion either way. It seems to be the second, just second phase. As they come up, maybe we can do that. So regulation 11, uh, basically put, just putting back in uh, what it, what it said fully in 2007, uh, just to add that extra last sentence in the sewage disposal expansion area for the existing structure, and that the lot size is large enough to permit a septic system repair or expansion, and any proposed increase in designs flow may require Title V inspection. Um, just means when you're subdividing a lot, you have room for a septic should the one existing fail. So it's subdivided, so you're assuming that there's going to be, maybe there's one residents there and mm -hmm. it's going to be multiples right so there's one house now you may, maybe you're cutting it in half and there's going to be a, a, f a future dwelling on the part you're subdividing off yeah so what this is saying is that you have to have sufficient a reserve basically on the parts piece you're cutting off from right so it wouldn't be considered it wouldn't get the um, modification the variances that we typically give to existing structures Right. Yeah. So, so, so imagine that the reserve area used to be on the lot that's being cut off, and now you're cutting off the reserve area. Yeah. Which is, if it was an existing structure, which this would be, we give special consideration. But um, in this case, we wouldn't because they're electing to do a subdivision. Right. Well, right? they would. No, I mean, basically, it's if someone's coming for us with a, a plan to subdivide this lot and put a septic system in with a reserve area for that lot just to make sure that the lot that they're cutting off from has yeah. enough room to for the, the reserve, reserve yeah. just in case if they fail because if it fails they can't then use what do they do yeah okay. right no, you're right 
very seldom they fail though. The only time they fail is when they don't take care of it. Right, you gotta take care of it. One individual came in front of us and I says, uh, by the way, you have a problem? He says, yes. I just moved in 25 years ago. So what's the problem? <laughs> My second system broke. I, I just what moved in. I understand it and went like that and they told me that I, I have to replace it. My friend, don't you understand that you come from an area where they have a sewage treatment? You go to a small town, they have a septic system. Right. Well, I didn't know that. Nobody told me anything. So now we emphasize, we tell the real estate people, if somebody comes from the city and they come to a small town, remind them they have a septic system. There are no sewage treatment here. Right. Don't come back 10 years or 15 years after and, and you cry because it cost you 80000 bucks. But anyway. <laughs> that's, that's the story so I always tell. That's them. a sad story. You came from the city and, and there's bugs here. Is there yeah. anybody that can help us with the bugs? <laughs> <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding me? This is, yes. No, that's, that's life. My thing is the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> we all, every other, every other street has chickens, right? I know. We have a keeping of animal regulation template. I was. Gonna, I think we need, <laughs> I, hear I would like to see that. It's on the MAHB website. We should consider that. I have. The, I have. I chicken, think there's a yeah. goat or a sheep Keeping in my chickens. neighborhood that I hear when I'm in my backyard. Yeah. I sheep. I think something. They, they, they clean up the yard. You know. Yeah. They, yeah. They don't yeah. Have oh. to you get a move out here. You're no, gonna they have a sheep they, next door. Not <laughs> sheep, but goats eat everything. They, they, they eat poison ivy. They eat poison, but, yeah. but they yeah. will clear yeah. your land. It's not like on the Flintstones where oh, they, you know, mold the land. They will take up the root. They'll get you. If you want to clear the land, you get a goat. You put it on a on a. Yeah. <laughs> I need to tell her the town needs goats to eat the poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You should be able to check no, them out the library. <laughs> they have them. <laughs> rent a goat. Yeah, we should do that. I'm getting a rent a goat. <laughs> Except what goes in comes out too. So that's fine. <laughs> as long as I don't get poison ivy, I'm good. Uh, regulation 13, the definition of a bedroom. Uh -oh. I think. I think. Oh, yeah. I think title, All right, we need some input on this. Title one. five is pretty thorough. <laughs> I think what it said in 2007 is a little bit like all over the place. Six rooms shall we have three bedrooms, seven rooms shall have four bedrooms, eight rooms, five bedrooms. I just think we need to revert to what the septic permit said and if it's not there for, for upgrades, if it's not there, um, just go to public record and see what the assessors say. Well, okay, so I have a room. It's got 70 square feet of floor area. It has a window, and I'm going to say it's a living room. Mm -hmm. How are you going to tell me it's not? 70 feet, 70 square feet. So it's your living room. Then why bother having this? I've got, I've got three rooms like this. Yeah, and I'm saying one's a living room. They're all living rooms because yeah. I have four kids and they each need their own. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm you can, like you can have as many as you want, as long as they're not bedroom. You can have an extra study. You can, as long as there is no closet. office, a finished basement. You can have it as long as you it's can have an extra kitchen if you want. But I guess I I'm missing the point of having this. If I mean, I guess it's more. Not quite sure. More for the new construction piece, you know, when they come in with the plans and we look at the room count and, or Jim looks at the room count. Yeah, the room count, but then if they like to have it. But I don't know well, how this also for, um, like, the, the permit that we had um, before, the, the house by the lake, where the, it was a single bedroom and they were trying to get the two bedroom. Yeah. Well, that was a new house, but the permit was, because they had torn down the house. But areas that have small lots that they want to sneak the in their bedroom. Yeah, so near the lake. So there's a, you know, I'm at the lake. I have a two bedroom cottage, and I'm saying, well, I'm going to, and it's 800 square feet. I'm going to build a 2500 or 2100 square foot house, and I'm going to say it's still two bedrooms, but I also have two extra living rooms in an office. But you don't have office in here, so two extra bit living rooms. Mm -hmm. How is this going to help us to, to no, determine? Well, well it's, I mean, I think the idea is to have one kitchen, one dining room, one living room. No, but you can have extra. As long yeah, as I don't not know if that'll work, though. As long as it's not a bedroom. Unless we, unless we put it in. They can challenge you. 
I don't know if there's enough teeth in this. What is the definition of a bedroom in Title V? It's right there in the first um, cell. Um, the first. There's a, enough a room But like a, a living room and a family room are kind of the same thing, really. You can't as long you as have more than one. Yeah, kinda, you know? you, yeah family room. You, you are correct. As long as it doesn't have a closet, you can, you can use it as a living room or a family room. Mm -hmm. You know, people get together and watch TV or something. Exactly. You know? And then you put a restriction, too. Even if you have a bedroom, you want to have, uh, you can say a D restriction on that particular bedroom, but I'm not going to use it. I'm gonna, if some handicap wants to have, instead of to go on the second floor, they want to live in that house, they can say, uh, I will not use the bedroom. You know what I mean? There's that D restriction. That means you can go in and check it uh, uh, so they can sleep uh, comfortably in the first floor. Mm -hmm. They can maybe, do that. Maybe in that um, that first cell there, I, there could have been a, an F that said, <clears throat> so E says at least one window. F says living rooms, dining rooms, kitchens, halls, bathrooms, unfinished cellars, and unheated storage areas over garages that are not considered bedrooms. Single family dwellings shall be presumed to have at least three bedrooms, where the total number of rooms for single family dwellings that exceeds eight, not including bathrooms, hallways, unfinished cellars, and unheated storage areas, the number of bedrooms presumed shall be calculated by dividing the total number of rooms by two, then rounding down to the next lowest whole number. Say, Mom, we can't afford it. So, I mean, maybe that is just sufficient. You know what the two bedroom goes for? And I think the un I think unheated no. is huge. Mm -hmm. I think the kids going to be able to afford that. Yeah, I'm sorry, you think like I think unheated, you know, that yeah, has to be stated. You to have to keep that in there because we, we've, got we, unheated, we've had that before. We've got unheated is in the Title V. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's only storage areas over garages. So that was a basement, I think. Yeah, it was like a basement. Like, yeah, it was the basement, but we could do unheated. For cellars and but you can make storage areas. Unheated rooms. Unheated yeah, spaces. Unheated, rooms. Yeah. unheated spaces. Hmm. But I just I, I I don't see any additional protection or additional restriction under and it's a question. I know mm -hmm. the the proposal versus the title mm -hmm. five. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I just pulled that from what it said in 2007. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard one. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Have, um, in your travels, have you seen any other approaches to that and how to define it? No, but they, I've only seen them rely on Title V. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe we just I think private. The, I think privacy, too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, um, we, had the, is, we had the finished basement. Was yeah. it going to be a bedroom? No, because it's, um, it's an open stairway. So privacy it. is is something that you want to... You wanted to put a, a wall up, call it a mudroom. Well, that was an, there was another one. I think it was a jerky where they said, no, it's just going to be a family room. It's going to be... Right, yeah. um, but w there was there was a door, there were windows, there was mm -hmm. heat, but there was a stairway coming through the middle of the mm -hmm. room that um, they would have to enclose. Right. So I think um, privacy also has to be as part of the definition yeah, that it's that a, a private room. room. Right. Well, I mean, that's what Title V yeah, says. Yeah, Title V yeah. said that. No, I know that, yeah. but if you were going to be going with this new definition here. I mean, maybe we should just have it say what Title V says. That's, I think we should go back to yeah. Title yeah. V. Yeah, because privacy is open for, um, you know, our opinion, determination. It's got some leeway in it if we see something like, you know, those basements that were coming through. Mm -hmm that they would have to be open and not sectioned off. Right. And then he did see any better. Mm -hmm. I guess let's think about it. And yeah. But I think reverting to Title V is pretty sufficient. I mean, they have a lot of language in here. Yeah, because we've let um, the jerky, we let them go in and we gave variances to finish, to finish the basement. Receive restrictions, too. Yeah, as long as they didn't go towards the privacy part, really. Yeah. But we gave them deed restrictions for yeah. you know finished basements with four bedrooms, and that was yeah. it. So, um, regulation fourteen design requirements um, in two thousand seven Title V um, was 
was different and um, they used to require the system profile to be drawn to scale and I don't necessarily I don't know I, uh, Louise you probably know more about the the drawings and them being to scale but you know the profiles when you see it you know coming from the tank to the D-box mm -hmm. to the to the leaching area they used to require that drawn to scale and it was repealed in 2011 but I don't see really see the need to put it back in but you might have a comment on that. <coughs> I, I wouldn't either. Okay. Do you, do you, do you like to look at plants that are drawn to scale or does it not make a difference to you? Um, on the profile. I don't think a profile matters. Because it's still shown. It's just, you know. Isn't it all drawn to scale? All the plans are drawn to scale. Well, the sort of the, the, the plan, the bird's eye view of the plan, yeah. I believe, is all drawn to scale. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's some sort of like outcropping um, yeah. window that pops out that shows the, the side view of it. And it's usually small? Um, small, it's just not necessarily to scale, just to be like you'll see a pipe. And then maybe it's like a, a broken. Oh, say it's a hundred oh. foot long pipe. Oh, and you know, they, they put just sort of like get like lightning bolts. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. Lightning. Just to fit up. So I'm, a I'm a hygienist. You don't want to see a hundred feet of pipe. It looks the same. For I have a question for you. Um, is it a requirement to put to have a registered land professional land surveyor survey property lines when you come for a Title V permit? Yeah, they really do have it. They do yeah. have yeah, it. They have the engineer, the surveyors. Oh yeah. They, do, they the don't man. always have it. Oh, yeah, yeah, they don't. Not the PLS. Not a professional land surveyor. We have engineers come in who are PLS. But some of it, this property already marked. Okay, a grandfather. That's I know, but happened. we had something across the street from me where yeah. they built a septic system on the lot. Somebody else's land. Yeah, I actually feel like we we should have a there PLS. There must be a, one of those companies that you were engaged for. No, <laughs> it wasn't me, but it's a real problem for people. Again, you know, we're, we're saying, okay, approve. And if we don't have, we can't be sure that it's actually on your property. Yeah, that's too to, bad. I think we need to um, require a professional land surveyor stamp. I mean, regulation 15 of our local regs clearly states that professional land surveyor. Okay, so you need to keep an eye on that because I know for a fact they're coming in without it. Well. It's, and it's they here it should be and they think it's yeah. standard practice yeah most most of the developer bring their own surveyor and their own engineer not a pe though it has to be a pls well we, we have to double check yeah what's a P, pls P professional land, land surveyor, surveyor. Yeah. yeah so the pe i mean it's not the same no and it's i think it's really important especially on some of the lots around here that it's not clear and it goes through generations and then you get to a point where the PLS comes in it's like whoa you're you're building on someone else's property and then you're stuck you could, I, yeah. I saw it happen well I can't imagine someone wouldn't want to do that they, before they started building yeah. I mean, they don't know that's I think that's why because when you go to sell to it sure. you know that's when you run into a real problem when the, the mortgage company comes out to do the survey and so yeah, we need to make sure. Yeah. So are you suggesting that um, they get an actual survey or that a PLS goes to the town and checks the... the I think whatever, line. it's just that it needs to all be depends. stamped by a PLS. All depends, though. Yes. However, I mean, it's up to them, so professional so opinion. They already have surveys done on them. Yeah, and if it's stamped by a PLS, we're good. But if it's not, I don't think we are. But that's already in the reg. So that's something that we just need to keep an eye on because I know they're coming. They don't think they have to do that. Mm. Remind them. And the same thing with the wetlands and who does a wetland survey. Right. Yeah. And um, we're going to talk to Concom about that. But do you, do you have any experience with that? No. Okay. No, not with the wetlands. Yeah. And sometimes they say under feet away. Sometimes all depends on the circumstance. If it's not that bad wetland, right, we right. just go 50 feet, 50 feet up. Maximum fifty, and okay. again, there's where the variance right. might or might not come in. Right, it doesn't interfere with the wetland or it all depends. But if it's a lot of water, like we have on Route Two, then forget about it. Not two, no hundred feet should be two hundred feet. 
You know, <laughs> there is there is one thing that I would like to consider adding to the wetland thing. Uh, we had a, also on my street a situation where um, somebody was building a septic, and they mapped wetlands across the street, but it was still in the buffer zone, and she had to pay for a DP permit. It was across the street, so this yeah. it's not hydraulically connected through the surface right, water. Right, right, right. I, I just didn't think that was fair to them. All it was like a tax rather than an environmental protection permit. In my mind, in my opinion. Mm. So we might want to include that in there in the, okay. in the buffer. But we also had someone come in and they had flags, wetland flags, on the plan. And they were flags that they found out in the field and didn't know where they came from. And they put them on the plan. And came in and said those were the wetlands. And after like three rounds of questioning, it was they came out and said, I don't know where they came from. So who puts a wetland flag in? They have to they have to be a wetland survey or not. An engineer, sorry, but <laughs> I'm not a wetlands person either, I don't know. So uh, Regulation 18, um, based, that's what it said in 2007, um, and it was repealed in 2013, and I just proposed to put 2007 back. But. Oh, it added the, the piece about the Board of Health agents shall inspect existing non-municipally owned sewage treatment facilities to ensure they are in compliance and the levels are acceptable. I don't know what those acceptable levels are. Maybe Jim could answer that, or we could talk to other towns to see what they allow. What sorts of systems are these referring to? Uh, systems that are up to 10,000 gallons a day. Water treatments, like I think. So like IBM? IBM The Point. And is this going to have anything to do with the sewering of the common at all, or is that just. No, that would be municipally owned. I think it's more than 10,000 gallons. Yeah, yeah. Why does it have the, the date in? Why is there a date in there? I think that when they, they had their meeting in 2007, and they were like, okay, we need a year to figure out what the best way is to handle this. And that's just the date they put in there. Okay. Maybe Gino knows. <laughs> were you, you were on the board in 2007 or no? I don't know if it's 2007, could be, I don't know. I have to look it up. Maybe I'll just do a little research on the levels. Someday you're going to have a sewage treatment and the border health will just vanish all over the town. Well, no, it's still responsible for protecting the environment and public health. They might probably, you know what they do in New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. There's a one person to take care of the border health, building permit, and everything else. Need a secretary at the same time. Head dishwasher. This one yeah. is building yeah. You don't want to eat in the restaurant. And if he likes you, he likes you. I'll be here. Is that some real advice? <laughs> no. You're on TV. <laughs> no. It's not legal, it's not legal <laughs> advice. No. Does anyone have any comments on that? So far. As long as that doesn't. <clears throat> that doesn't impede any of the town sewer, well, town that's sewer that's 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 they're proposing. Since I wouldn't want to make, that, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want to make a, a small little change in our town regulations that might make a big difference. It might hinder the yeah yeah the development down there. Yeah. I think we need it. I hope they can figure it out. I don't 
Uh, we have. I haven't been through one of these. Um, so it would be good to have Jim tell us what the history is. On the sewage treatment? Well, just what we do have in place. How? Because yeah. I know that they have to um, provide um, groundwater monitoring reports <laughs> from IDM. Yeah. And they've got, I don't know if they have criteria they have to meet, but that might be something that we need to talk to Jim about. Mm -hmm. and find out what, what the procedure is now. Yeah, because this is not a normal something we see every day, like yeah. a house. Or and they just went through IBM and the point, so. Well, the point should be all set because it's brand, brand new. new. Yeah. But I'm just wondering what protocol they went through. With yeah, like who does it? Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They might already have something. I just think so. Right. We should just know what that yeah. is. If somebody asks. Yeah. So, uh, Regulation 20, um, I just proposed to put back what it said in 2007. We do rely a lot on our local water well supplies, and we um, should pay attention to ledge. So, decayed shale, topsoil, subsoil. So, are water wells in, in bedrock? I assume they are. I, I actually don't know. I don't either. I believe so. So we want we just want naturally occurring pervious material to be five feet above ledge. Yeah, because that provides the. Because when it hits the ledge, then it just goes into the, the yeah, water supply. The, um, the sands provide the kind of the filtration mechanism, right. whereas um, bedrock doesn't. Right. As, as far as I know. Any other comments? I'm going to defer to the geologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about a well and the septic system? Uh, no, just talking about the, the pervious material, so what perks. Mm -hmm. It needs to be five feet of that material if there's ledge down there. Okay. Yeah, so last I looked at it, the filtration mechanism is the sand that it goes through, so it allows the bacteria to work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if um, you get that when it's going through bedrock fractures or, um, you know, the top of bedrock around here is kind of crushed up. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if you get that sort of microbial action in the um, bedrock. But are you talking about the wells or are you talking about the septic system? Oh, we're talking about protecting the wells. Okay, all right by having this be a regulation when you install or okay. when you test All your right. septic system. And these are our town wells or people's? Town wells and private. Mm -hmm. I mean, the town wells, I think, are pretty pretty far down. Yeah, so it would be the groundwater resource in general. Yeah. So that would discharge right. the lakes, too. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Regulation 21, I think, is pretty straightforward. Any facilities for disposal or treatment of sanitary sewage located wholly or part in the town of Littleton shall require the approval of and permit from the Littleton Board of Health prior to construction. So that would be any facilities, whether it be on commercial or residential. We want to. We want to. We want to see them, mm -hmm. just to make sure they're protecting the environment. You mean well. The 10 feet um, for the, we're on the impervious barriers, right? Oh, we can be. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 21. Yeah. You just put that right balls back. I'm good on. with 21. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good at 21. Sorry. Hmm. This looks familiar. Number 23. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the 10 feet, isn't that already in Title Five? Yeah. 
um, the 10 feet from breakout. Oh, it's recommended. Is, it's recommended. Right. So we're actually saying it is, so we don't have to go through that again. Right. right. That's actually trying to that. eliminate some gray area. Yeah. So remember the last meeting, the reg said recommended 10 feet, but we didn't have it in a memo. Yeah, it just said recommended, so it's yeah. like we weren't giving it. In Title V. Okay. So like if it says should instead of shall, yeah. you know, there's like gray area there. So this is just sort of. Yeah, I like having it straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Regulation 26. Does anyone have any more comments on 23? I would just take out the word et cetera again. Et cetera. Oh. There's extra work to go. <laughs> is the certified mail, is that Title V? Maybe there's a question of what cer yeah, certified or return receipt. Or I just want to make sure we're on point there. I don't know that it is. I can check on that. And usually when you're giving notice, you would do it by certified mail um, and first class prepaid because a lot of times people won't pick up certified mail. Right. But there's a presumption, there's a legal presumption that if you don't get something back, that it has actually been received. <laughs> right. They have to sign in it. Well, they don't sign. No, but if you send a regular letter to someone and it doesn't get returned right, to you, right. there is a presumption that it was received. Right, right. So how does um, putting in what the first first class, class postage prepaid means you, you mailed a letter to them okay. and you mailed it certified. Oh, you did it both that. ways. You can do both ways, yeah. So they need to be, so two pieces of mail are going to the abutters? Correct. Each abutter? So, so, but they, they could still us, not they say that they didn't pick it up or that they didn't they receive, receive it. it. They could, but there's a presumption yeah. if it didn't okay. come back <laughs> that it was so received okay. if then you put a stamp on it first that. class. Okay. Yeah. And then only two people come. So we did have a case that came up um, recently where the abutter, they sent it out to the abutter and um, they didn't live there anymore. No, they had the wrong people or the wrong yeah, address. Yeah, they had the they, so they didn't really send it to the abutter. They sent, sent it, it to, to the, the previous address. The previous owner, which got yeah. forwarded. Yeah. So we need to. I guess we just have to be diligent about checking the assessor's records. Well, no, that they actually return their receipt. Yeah, we. Yeah. Right. Well, this says the applicant has to do it. Right. So it's the applicant's responsibility to right. do it. But what happened was they came in, and there was a question as to whether. The abutter and abutter came in and said, I never got anything. And we found out that they were a new owner. They weren't listed in the assessor's records. It hadn't so, updated yet or something. But yeah, so they never updated, got a notification. But it had been a while. But you know, but the they property. came in. So they did have actual notice. Well, that's because the there was a lot of opposition in the neighbor's well, room. So they had notice. I mean, there's they something called they actual notice, right. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Why, but just by hearing through your neighbor, or? and you're there. Yeah. So what? What is your yeah. due process claim? Mm -hmm. You found out about it and you came. Right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so well, they didn't get a letter. They got actual notice because they were here. Um, so twenty six, just having a if it's a sewer line greater than a hundred feet, she'll have a clean out. At every 50 foot interval. Just think that <coughs> makes finding problems easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, having clean outs every 50 feet of the sewer line? I don't know what plumbing code is, but I'm sure it's stricter than that. You, yeah, I see. you have more experience with that, I think, yeah. definitely than I do. I have any experience with it, so. Well, it comes to natural when they do that. They have to clean it every 50 feet. Yeah, that's standard. Yeah. Okay, so not a bad idea just to stick it in there. Okay, here we go. Yeah, then 34 is a new reg proposed because we've had some new zoning um, bylaws adopted in town. <coughs> One senior residential development. So to protect the environment, trying to 
just get a handle on what exactly is going to be happening. So any housing unit constructed as a part of a senior res residential development shall be considered new construction and served by an on-site sewage disposal system with gallons per day, flow rate of no more no less than 110 gallons per day for one bedroom units, and no more no less than 150 gallons per day for two bedroom units. That's what Title V says for over 55 housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have it be age restricted to ensure all occupants are over 55. 55 yeah. I'm going to be all owners because can't the occupants have adult children live with them? And I guess so. I think that's yeah. I think that's one of the things about type about, about um, senior 55. housing over 55. You can buy it. I guess oh, okay. maybe it's senior versus residential senior versus 55. But I thought the owners had to be at least 55 years old and no children, but they could have grown adult grown. children. They can have natural needs. They could have, yeah, other residents, but they don't have to be necessarily 55, right. but the owner has to be 55. Right. So that Maybe the owner resident. Owner resident. Yeah. The regulations that, or the development, and I'm not sure the, the terms here, but the development that's coming up is, I think it's called over 55. So they, they build it to specifications that, um, that support aging in place but and they they can get it built with these lower um, flow rates but they don't have to sell it doesn't have to be occupied by an over 55 person so I think the point here is that if it's an over 55 person then these flow rates are acceptable but if it's called a senior resident no matter what it's called if the owner or the occupant, whichever we decide, is not over 55, then these flow rates shouldn't apply. Is that correct? Right. But I think what will happen is they'll try and overbuild the systems. They'll try to overbuild them, you think? Yeah, to accommodate the... But I don't think they have to. Accommodate the younger? Yeah. But I don't think they they have a... That's not required right now, though. I think it's really gray, and I think it's a new thing, and I think that we could probably put some concrete yeah that's what I'm wondering if if this has the teeth to do that we're call, and, and this is where the terms come in there's is there like a senior to residential development is that equivalent to over 55 or is that what you call it like what's the definition of that and does that include right, like everything that's going to come in front of a senior us? residential is that going to be like nursing home like you said stay at home um, will it have nursing home Agent care place. will it have will it have you know Elder, elder care, medical, you know, yeah, as, you get, they, oh, as you get well, older. Does, does your zoning bylaw address this? Do they have a definition? It's non-age restricted in the bylaw. So it's built to accommodate, but it's not age restricted. So these flow rates, I think, are based on the age restriction, right. but our definition is not age restricted, and that's the disconnect. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what we're trying to address Well, you can here. define it for the purposes of this regulation. You can define what a senior residential development is. Right. And so I'm thinking... And it would just be for the purposes of this regulation. So for the purpose of this regulation, senior residential development is um, age-restricted to ensure all occupants yeah. are to be over 55 years of age. All owner-occupants, maybe. Um, I, owner residents. Oh, well, you want to oh. make sure whoever's moving oh, there is over 55 when for the purposes for the of flows. this. Yeah, you're right. Because it's what we want to do is connect over 55 with the reduced flow rate. Does that make sense? Well, I think it should be all occupants. Not I don't know. 55. I wasn't going to ask less, that. Less, well, do people all over 55 use right. less yeah. or right. more? Yeah, less. But it has to be over 55. I don't know. Yeah. There must be some I'm data. I'm 53 years it. old. Yeah, I still <laughs> take a shower every day, and I don't think I'm going to change that when I'm 56. <laughs> right? You don't know how often you take a shower. <laughs> every day. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand either. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand you why the age. You turn 55, and all of a sudden, you don't use as much water. Right. Yeah. Well, it's for a one bed. So for the one bedroom. <laughs> Rate is one ten is one ten one bedrooms one ten oh, so it only goes down when it's two bedrooms yeah yeah, yeah. it gets it shrinks by sixty gallons a day yeah, no yeah. seventy gallons a day I, 
There's I don't know what the rationale some, there's gotta is. Be some I rationale. Think, uh, there must be some the data somewhere. I, yeah. so. I think there should be like 150, but I don't want to. Well, they're not doing as much laundry. Right. They're yeah. not? As oh. a family? Yeah, well, that's true. One individual and maybe that's true. a child or something that is handicapped. They're not doing as much cooking. Right. Yeah, laundry right. takes a lot of, a lot of water. water. Mm -hmm. Is constantly going. I knew a grandma that used to wash her sheets every day. I was going to say. Wow. <laughs> Your grandmother? No, not my grandmother, <laughs> oh. but a grandmother that used to wash her sheets. She every woke day. up, she washed her laundry, she washed wow. her sheets. Every and she day. made her bed, probably. Well, she was made clean. her bed every day. She was a clean lady. Yeah, but that, I mean. Well, we should find out if the, what the data is for this. Yeah. The reasoning behind those rates. Yeah. But, but I think your point is good is that in the beginning we have to define what we're regulating here. So if the, if the intent is to make sure that these people who are living here are actually over 55 because they use allegedly they, water. They come, by, they come by unless they're 55. That's they what, can. No. Yes. They don't. If it's 55, somebody has to be 55 to buy it. No. Only if something happened to the individuals 55. Then why are they this, buying it? No, that's not right. I was at that meeting and they said that is not they the case. They must have changed it because they, they used to be the other way. Well, I, that's what I, I don't know if they have different categories, but they said it's, it's built to support in house aging, aging in place. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, but you don't have to be old. under 55. How can you buy it something 55? Right. That doesn't make any sense. I know. So someone that's say fifty, but it, that's that's what I heard. Is that would buy it for their future? Right. I have is that no what you're idea. I don't know. If or it, maybe that that someone that's sense. younger will buy it for. The guy over there is probably forty. He wants to buy a house number? for fifty-five. If I'm the seller, I'm sure you guys look, look at him. He can't wait. He's, he's, yeah. Look, you are forty years old. Get out of here. You come back when you're fifty-five. No, I I was at the meeting and they talked about this a lot. It was pretty amazing. Oh, I think they're doing, probably what they're doing is. Maybe I'm wrong and we should get the real. I don't understand it. There's gotta, it's gotta be something wrong. We need to clarify it's, it's not. That. It's not age restricted in the bylaw. Yeah. I think it actually says that. Not it's age got, restricted. Go. So anyone well, can buy it, but to live there. Nope. Wow. Yeah. They must have do that because that is Surprising, that, huh? Yeah. Because they're 55, as a lower price to buy it. A lot of people come by a four hundred thousand dollar home. They probably say, "Well, fifty five only cost one hundred eighty. So they probably say, "Well, we give them an opportunity it for somebody that doesn't meet the criteria. We give them the we give them the uh, fifty five, even though he's only forty years old, like this guy here. They're twenty. <laughs> a bunch of millennials over there. <laughs> So, I don't know. So what are your thoughts on that? I, I would um, research why the youth rates are lower. Okay. And I'll try to do that. I put a star next to it, okay. which means it's fine. But I would like to see us on the record here as saying that we want to re restrict the age for the owner and the occupants. Yeah, so whatever that flow well, rate is based on, I don't think the flow rate has to be... You know, if the data is saying if you're over 55, you use a lower flow rate, it has to be connected. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's not rational. Right. Not right. right. So if it yeah. says, well, if you're over 70, really, then it'll have to be 70, mm -hmm. whatever the flow rate is, the data that supports that. I'd like to see that. And I'll what? supply my own data from my own house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't understand. That's I don't understand that. She's <laughs> I don't understand why there's no age. It's interesting, isn't it? Is there tax liability? <laughs> no, it's to get through the permit. I believe it. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, yeah, well, I think we're done. No, there's a last one, which is really good. Oh, I deleted that one. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, don't I like that one. Yeah. Can yeah. I read it? Yeah. 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 No, no. So, um, Shelley's, Shelley suggested what date for the public hearing? 
Oh, well, she wrote an email. Why don't you look at it? August 14th or 18th to, see, to speak with Jim, or Jim wouldn't be available Jim until would, then. Jim yeah, I don't understand that. that. That's a long time. I yeah, know. I think I think well, we just like well, I, think. I think they said that it gets quieter in the summer. It has to be in the paper two weeks. Uh, yeah, but I don't think that's the public meeting. That's when we talk to Jim. Because I think we need to talk to Jim before we have a public meeting. And you want to see if we can get a DEP person right. to yeah. come in. So that's two. So, so Jim can't come talk to us for two months, which I don't really understand. Over We'd like to thank you so much for coming. Oh, you're yeah, entirely thank welcome. Thank you so much. I learned a little bit, too, here. I, I'm sure we, I hope we titles. didn't bore you. No, you didn't. Okay, and I will see if I can find it. Could you somewhere. explain to us, like, I personally, I'm confused, and I think maybe we all are, is you're an amazing resource for us. Like, we need help. Like, how does that work? Because you're okay. getting paid by somebody. Like, what's your skill Yes, in? Um, I am the director of policy and law. My um, salary comes from three different grants that MAHB has with the Department of Public Health. I have a grant where I work um, on tobacco control issues, um, and I help municipalities draft comprehensive tobacco sales regulations and secondhand smoke regulations. I have another grant, or MAHB has another grant that I work pursuant to, and that grant is a grant that um, is designed to prevent chronic disease and um, increase physical activity and nutrition. So I, that's the meeting I was at in West Boylston that I came over from, from here. And then I have, and this is where you come in, a general capacity building grant with the Office of Local and Regional Health at the Department of Public Health. And they pay me to provide technical assistance and legal education to local boards of health to help them build their capacity. Now that is actually my smallest grant, um, but that's the grant that um, allows me to come to Board of Health meetings and provide technical assistance. We're hoping that we're gonna be able to build that grant into a bigger grant so that <coughs> we can spend more time doing this, but that's how uh, you don't have to pay me for me to so you come go here. All over the place. Then? All over the state. Yes. So if you need a recommendation to support that grant, if you're putting in an application, I think we'd be happy to give. Yeah. Thanks very much. I I actually got it last year and it goes for five years. Okay. So. But just keep. And I've been mind. doing this for. I'm sure you have lots, but just since 18 just for about it. the past 18 years, I've yeah. been doing it with, with MAHB. So so if that's your smallest grant, is are you limited as to how much time you can give us? Supposedly, yes, and a lot of my time recently has been consumed with <coughs> legalized marijuana. Oh. There's um, other stuff we don't like, but anyway. So, um, but I try to, that. I'm yeah. sorry? Yeah. Yeah. There's a template yeah. on the website. There is a presentation rest. I did, a yeah. brief presentation I did at the orientation on it. I can send you other presentations that I've done on the topic. Um, but there certainly is a real need to have more TA provided to local boards of health, especially since you don't, by law, have direct access to your town attorney. You need to get permission. I'm, I would yeah, imagine. You have to ask the selection. Oh, that, you have to that, ask that was the a question that I had, so thank you. Yeah, you, you have to ask. ask by, in, mo in a lot of municipalities, it's just a given that the Board of Health does have the ability to just call up the town council. We don't have that. But in some, in... A majority of cases they don't yeah. they would have to call <coughs> they would have to ask the selectman for permission we to, have to say what and, our, we'll give and what is. Half an hour this mm -hmm. so this is an, a, a my position is an attempt to at least provide some technical assistance in legal education and I also have a legal research engine so if you have issues with different laws, you can mm -hmm. email me or whatever and I can look up or I can find cases for you or something, you know, along That's those good lines. to know. And you know, I, I just remembered um, at that meeting we went to too, they had a, a session on vaping, which yeah. I had no idea. And I, that's something that we might want to start talking about is yeah. the kids are all doing it and it's horrifying. Mm. 
Actually, and, and Tobacco Free Mass is going to be doing a forum on that September, it's a Thursday, I think it's September 8th. Um, that's open to the public at Mass Medical it's Society. The woman who gave the presentation. Maureen she, Bugs, Bu she Busby. She was amazing. She's yeah. a colleague of mine. I, she's uh, really awesome. Yes. And she brings in stuff because this they can be vaping. You don't even realize it. And I've heard, you know, teachers and professors telling me that the kids are vaping in classes and they, they yeah. can't even catch them. Yeah, there's a new product called Jewel that yeah, looks just it's like, like 500 a, times the nicotine. That yeah, it and, it, like and that. it looks just like a zip drive, and there's very little vapor that comes out of it, so kids are just using it in class. And they're becoming addicted because there's such a higher concentration mm -hmm. of nicotine. And it's oil based. Some of it's oil based. Oil based. So they're breathing in. It's not like water based an aerosol, anymore. I think oil. That's What's coating the matter with your kids? I mean, my father used to slap me if I had a cigarette in my hand. These kids, young, they get they have it, and then <coughs> they buy. They take. They, they don't go smoke and they. Cigarettes. Well, uh, they don't smoke cigarettes as much as they do other things. Yeah, but yes. they still. It's not the normal. No. Company make it so they can sell it, and they have. And they target kids. But yeah. I think that's something that we have that really great. We have a um, little tin coalition against addiction, mm -hmm. which Lisa's is part of, and um, they've done great Let's stuff. But we might want to. The stuff on the videos and talk stuff about like that. Vaping just to get some information out there. Well, it's good to get the information out to the parents because yeah, they're not and I haven't seen anything coming out locally on that. I was, I learned a lot. I'm glad. I had no that idea. That was the intent. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Can I'm going to leave you with these. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Does anybody want to adjourn us or? I make a motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.